In this video, we're going to be focusing on paint as a substance and a medium for expressing yourself. During childhood, most of us experienced the joy of painting, sometimes without a brush, and we used our fingers. We made mud pies and we would scrape that mud along the path, or we would draw with chalk. And we also know that our predecessors also liked to experience express themselves through art, which is evident with the ancient cave paintings. I'd like to motivate you or inspire you to see paint as a medium in its own right. And so we're going to be exploring or focusing on it, on its different properties. So first off, we're going to be diluting it down to a very battery to a pancake type mixture. We're going to be doing some pouring. Then we're going to be experimenting with how transparent it can be. And last of all, we're going to be working with palette knives and really sort of thick impasto paint in an alla prima style. And I'm doing this because I'm trying to um, get you to play, to be creative and to just enjoy the patterns and the colours and the feel of the paint. So I'm using some of this um, Free Flow and I have got the Thalo Blue here. This one here is Ultramarine um, Acadiola Light and I'm also using some other brand of acrylic paints. Now you can mix these up with some medium to make them um, to make them a little bit more fluid. I have mixed up a few plastic containers. This one here is with Thalo Blue. I just diluted some of the free flow I have got a magenta or alizarin crimson here, diluted. I've got one made up a little bit lighter and I've also got the free flow. And I thought I would just start by adding in, and I'm just gonna try adding it from the top of the canvas. I'm gonna sort of slow it down and I'm being, and I'm gonna tilt the canvas different ways I think that I might throw another one on in the same area and you can see that it is making all these really fascinating sort of colors as it's coming down here And it's blending a little bit here and it's making um, some violet and it's actually particularly nice on the, on the paper. So a little bit more. And so in this process, You've just got to enjoy um, all these experimental marks because you're not going to be really able to control them. And there were many artists who used this technique. A lot of the colour field artists would pour stuff like Lewis Morris and also with Pollock how he actually dripped or controlled dripped onto the canvas. It's kind of fun just sort of watching it pool and especially, especially when it mixes in. <laughs>
Um, for the next exercise, I've used 300 gram weight watercolour paper and I've actually just popped it into water and it's just been drying here and I've got quite a few sheets just here. I'm going to be using watercolour paper, uh, watercolour paints and I have mixed up a few puddles and I've mixed up the red and I've mixed up the red and the yellow just here. I'm going to use some watercolour, some big watercolour brushes here. So I'm just using small sheets of watercolour paper here and I've actually put them into the water and they're just blotting out here. And I'm going to be using watercolour paints and I've actually made a few puddles of red, one of yellow just here. And I've got some nice watercolour brushes and I'm going to experiment with how the paint actually behaves when I'm putting it on to the wet um, paper just here. And so I'm going to do a whole few of these together because I want to see and experiment with the different sorts of shapes and the colours that they're going to make on these. Again, we're going to like tilt them around a little bit. And you can see how it blooms and especially when it goes wet into wet. I'm going to wait for these to dry and put some more over the top. It's always fun looking at them after they've dried up a little bit and you can see all the different sorts of edges and some of these edges which are really sharp and there are other edges where these are these big blooms and these back washes. And you're always going to get some that you like and equally you're going to get some that you don't really like. Some of them are just so beautiful with these different rivers and these layers of colour and how, how the paint almost has its own mind and it does what it wants to do with the water. In our last task, we're going to be inspired by the painter Wayne Thiebaud and he painted pastries, cakes, pies and sweets and he often applied the paint in layers using a palette knife. He was inspired by his mum and his memories of his mum when she used to ice cakes. If you're inclined to make some cupcakes or a donut and ice it in a beautiful way, then go ahead. But for me, I went to the Evoca Beach markets and I actually bought my cupcakes, which were ready-made. This painting is going to be done a la prima, which means that we're going to be doing it in one setting. I suggest getting your cupcakes, setting them up, shining a light on them, such as a torch or a candlelight, or if you do have a video light, you could give that a go. So after you have set up your subject matter, decide on what view you want. If you would like it high, bird's eye, if you're just going to look at it eye level, experiment. So we're going to need some palette knives. They come in lots of different shapes. If you like, you can just buy some plastic ones to start off. And you're going to need all of your oil paints and I'm going to have some oleo gel in mine 
mix it in with the oil paints to make it really thick just like icing. Start by doing a gestural drawing of the basic shapes. Mixing up your colours on the palette, put in the largest, biggest shapes first. So you're moving from your darker colours through to your lighter colours and use your palette knife to scrape back to get some interesting textures. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and you have tried a few of these techniques of using paint in a different way through the pouring or by making it very transparent and by trying out this oil painting method where you use something different, perhaps a palette knife. Because I think that it's important as an artist is to experiment, to have fun and to actually take a few chances. chances. So now it's time to go and eat your cake.